critic of Donald Trump through his entire uh, administration, not for the reasons that the corporate press uh, is a critic of Donald Trump, for different reasons, but I, look, this is just so obvious. I mean, for anybody who's being honest with themselves, look at this. This is a maybe misdemeanor that they have, they, it's a glorified misdemeanor that they've turned into 34 felonies. It is totally appalling. Um, appalling. This, this is a, a result of the Let's justice system being opinion. weaponized, and they had this in New York where they know, I mean, there's, getting a jury to convict Donald Trump in New York is pretty easy. Um, people hate his guts there. And uh, this is, it's, crazy it's, it's a major moment for the, in the history of the United States of America. You know, one of the things that I hear a lot of Trump critics will say, um, which to me is the most, uh, you know, in the, you ever hear the red pill, blue pill analogy? Like, you know, in the Matrix, you either have the red pill or the blue pill. It's the most blue pill thing I've ever heard. Where they go, no president is above the law. You go, except all of them are. You know what I mean? Like, all previous presidents are above the law. And there's been major crimes committed by presidents throughout the entire history of the United States of America. Exactly. I mean, um, obviously, people know that George W. Bush and Dick Cheney we should, instituted we should, uh, torture. Put every um, president Barack jail. Obama had American citizens uh, drone bombed without charges pressed against them. I mean, there's all types of things that you could prosecute former presidents for. And there's all types of war crimes that you could prosecute Donald Trump for. Um, for sure. But they don't go after him for that. Soleimani. Because then their next guy would be open to being prosecuted for war crimes. So they're going after him for every little thing that they can get. It's a, uh, look, the United States of America, our government has done some, some bad things in our past. We've lied the American people into wars many, many times, many, many times. Um, World War I, Vietnam, uh, Iraq. Um, this is something different. We've never done this before. We've never like weaponized the justice system against a former sitting president of the United States who, by the way, was framed for treason by his intelligence agencies while he was president. And now they're weaponizing the Justice Department against him while he is the overwhelming front runner to win the next election. It's a, it's a truly wild time to be alive. Chris. There is I hope to God Chris is that clear and that fast and that concise in his speech because this is something that we really need to dive into. Um, the reason they don't go after presidents is because of presidential immunity, which they're litigating right now. So the idea of you make war decisions and this and that sounds great. Let's get them. It's not how the law works. It's never worked that way. That's why you haven't seen it. I agree with your analysis of this case. I've never liked it. I don't like that Bragg jumped the line uh, because I think that he wound up ruining uh, what was a legitimate legal look at what happened in Georgia, which now I don't know that it's going to happen because of that immunity argument. Although I, think, I think it will lose. This was a misdemeanor that was trumped up to felonies to call it 34 counts is laughable yeah. because the 34 counts are different checks that were signed to pay back Cohen. This district attorney has no problem knocking down significant felonies to misdemeanors. He did it 70% of the time. Now, the people of New York City can judge him, and if they like the policy, if they like it, he made an argument why he was going to do that. But the same guy who does that then did this to Trump. He campaigned on going after Trump. And you don't make this case against anybody else. And the same thing goes for the attorney general in New York. And yes, Good. she went after my brother, like so maybe analysis. I'm just saying it because she did that. I'm not, but you know, have at it. You don't bring the case of two sets of books that you brought against Trump. Did he have two sets of books? Yes. Did he have Michael Cohen pay off these ladies and try to hide it? Yes, he did it. Should it have been prosecuted as a felony? Absolutely not. Does it embolden his case that everything that happens in America is corrupt? Yes. And I think that's a big tragedy. Um, so what does this mean to him? My analysis of it is this. The only way it hurts him is if in specific states, people who are called persuadables right now, which is really not fair because what they really are is in my interviews with, this, with these populations, I don't know which one of these is more frightening to me. So I don't know yet. That's not really a persuadable. A real persuadable is, oh, I, I like what Dave is saying, you know, but not 100%. You know, if Cuomo could help me a little bit more on these issues, I may go for him. That's a persuadable. This is just people who are just so disgusted. They don't know which way to go. This may move the needle in states with that population in a way that could hurt Trump. Uh, but I think he's going to raise a lot of money off it. He already has. He and already has. I think it was a case that should not have been brought. And it was brought for the wrong reasons. Um, all right. Just a couple things on that real quick. Because I don't agree that it's presidential immunity. That's the reason why previous presidents haven't been, uh, haven't, haven't been gone after. I mean, look, when Barack Obama was first elected, remember, this is not Barack Obama the president, or it's the very beginning, but this is Barack Obama the candidate in 2008 who was talking about ending wars right. and closing Gitmo and reinstituting habeas corpus and all these type of things. Right. And there was a lot of pressure on him from his left-wing supporters to prosecute George W. Bush and Dick Cheney and other top members of that cabinet for war crimes that had clearly been committed. And Barack Obama uh, gave a speech about it. And he said, uh, in it, he, he conceded, he goes, yes, we, uh, we tortured some folks. That's good. He just, said, he just said it. And he goes, but now is the time to look forward, not backward. Which is a weird thing about prosecuting crime. Typically, you have to look backward in order to do it. But that was, but my point is just that, the, listen, 
the way things really work in the real world is that at the highest levels of power, there's no such thing as law. Okay? At the, higher, at the highest levels of power, you all that matters it. is what's their political will to do. And the truth is there was no political will to try George a lot, W. Bush. A lot of good things are being crimes. said here. There is political will to stop Donald Trump for this. And look, I know you're, you're a lawyer, and I'm sure you, you would kind of agree on this, that look, if you had Donald Trump on videotape stabbing someone or something like that, or you had some clear crime that he had committed, and you went, look, we typically don't go and, and prosecute former presidents, but look, I mean, this is just so like egregious, we cannot. This is every single one of these cases are novel legal theories where they've come up with some philosophical way well, where not they all can of them, spin... But these two New York ones, yes. Okay, fine. Where, where they can spin this into something that they never would prosecute otherwise. For, just so everybody understands, a hush money payment isn't illegal. No. It's not illegal to pay someone to say, hey, don't tell anyone no, about it's this. it's just a contract. Th that's right, it's just a contract. What they're saying is that this was a campaign expense and he didn't itemize it on his business records the right way. And, Cohen, and with Cohen's testimony in this, I mean, it's pretty wild that they actually got Well, they got him because of, of the checks, okay? Because Cohen, they had that. I mean, you can't believe Michael Cohen. But the problem was, this happened. You know, the, the tape, you have Trump and Cohen talking about it. It happened. And Cohen is a rapacious liar. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, and you cannot like him for that. But Trump did it. It's just not a felony. And yes, they've gone after people for having two sets of books. Not people like Trump and in these circumstances. Now, what I get beaten up for when I'm in a different room is <laughs> that I say there's a thing called prosecutorial discretion. All right? The idea that if I have the facts on Dave Smith, I'm going to prosecute him 10 times out of 10. It's not true. There has to be policy involved. Is this something I really care about? Is this the kind of crime we're trying to stop? Uh, we live this in uh, your state too, DUI. DUI used to be no big thing. They had three different levels of it. Then all of a sudden it became a big policy. And now we all know, I'm sure in our own personal lives, God forbid that happens, how big a deal it is and they're definitely gonna come for you. These crimes are not those things. The Georgia case is something different. I don't know that you'll ever get to hear it. I do see it a little differently though. I believe that this society uh, does have administration of justice under law. Is it perfect? Of course not. Compare it to other places, looks a little better. But we haven't figured this out. You said novel legal theory as kind of like a pejorative about those New York cases, and I think you're basically right about that, certainly this one that we're talking about. But there is this issue of this constitutional mechanism that if you're a president, you have to be impeached and removed, and then you are subject to the law. So, you know, and then people say, you saw, I don't know if you guys followed the Supreme Court thing, it was actually pretty interesting, where he was like, so, what if Dave and I are running for the same office and he decides to just shoot me in the head while he's president of the United States? Is that okay? And his guys were like, yeah. Especially <laughs> Joe Biden can't lift a gun. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll take you out back. He'll take you out back. Um, so, you know, it, it, look, here's something that I, I, I think I struggle with a lot in this business. Um, and this is a Jordan Peterson quote. You have to ignore single factor explanations for complex situations. It's tempting, you want them. You want it to be simple, you want it to be obvious. But very often it isn't. Um, even this situation with Trump, which I think politically kind of net net probably winds up helping him and hurts all of us. Bill O'Reilly suggested to me on my show last night that Joe Biden should do the right thing for the country and pardon Donald Trump. There's a growing interest in... He said he should call Governor Hochul, state crime. He should call Governor Hochul and say, pardon Joe Biden. Thank you, genius. Well, if you'd let me finish, you would have heard it. So, but here's the problem with that. What happens if Joe Biden did that? Oh, Joe Biden pardons Trump of any federal crimes, okay? And Hochul clears him of this shit so we don't have to live through the sentencing, all right? And just so you know, when he is sentenced, July 11, he's gonna appeal. They're gonna go to sentencing. Even if he is sentenced, and I was wrong about this case, I thought it would be hung. Um, and I don't think the guy's going to sentence him to time. Wow. I could be wrong again. But even if he is sentenced to time, he's not, you're never going to see him in a jumpsuit. He is going to appeal, and there is no reason to have a first-time offender incarcerated for an offense like this, even though it's a felony, it's an e-felony. Well, listen, I, I'll say... It's, it's 34, the, but it's sentencing, it's going to be the same transaction. I, I, I would it's say not that they caught right? him 34 times. I, I would say... if. So yeah, guys, uh, both of them agree that this was a tragedy that this happened and they both disagree with the actual judgment. And I guess uh, the only difference Cuomo actually believes that the other two cases outside of New York are actually legitimate, which is kind of insane. Because, for example, the Georgia one is crazy and it's falling apart already. And uh, I'm sure he, he disagrees with that one, at least. But anyways, uh, interested in your opinions, guys, leave them.